We've all at one time or another gone into a dressing room or a bathroom and been able to observe the phenomenon of two mirrors reflecting the images of one another. I've always found that fascinating. But if you were to replace one of those mirrors with a partially reflective mirror, what some people refer to as a one-way mirror, it allows you to look at these reflections straight on instead of only at an angle. This is the basis for the infinity mirror, and this idea has been around for some time. Logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. It seems Dr. Spock even keeps one in his apartment, I guess to reflect. In a case where you have two parallel mirrors, if you introduce a beam of light, the light will become trapped in between the two mirrors, bouncing back and forth. But in the case of an infinity mirror, one of the normal mirrors is replaced with a mirror that allows the transmission of some light. And some of that light will bounce through, and it's able to be picked up by your eyes. In my example, I used a piece of window tint. Now this effect works a lot better if you have a reasonably quality piece of glass like this one-way mirror. And I know it seems to play tricks on your eyes, but you're looking at a reflection of the ceiling and seeing through it at the same time. But this isn't really why I brought you here. I want to show you how you can create a parabola with an infinity mirror. Whenever you see this, x squared, anytime you see it in algebra, it means that you're describing a parabola. And a parabola is this U-shaped thing that you've seen all throughout your life. It doesn't matter if there's something in front of the x squared or if a different x is added to it or if something else is taken away from it these things are irrelevant all that matters is that if there's an x square there's a parabola somewhere close by sometimes in algebra you'll hear this referred to as a quadratic equation and that comes from the latin prefix quad which means square and it means square because it's describing a situation where it's x times x or x squared. So really the most basic equation for a parabola is y equals x squared and this is called a quadratic function. And in order to see what this looks like on a graph we just substitute values in for x. If x equals 1, x squared is still 1 so y equals 1. And if x equals 2, x squared equals 4, so y equals 4. And then we just plot these points. And we do it for negatives also. And graphing a parabola is that simple. All of these other things that can be found on a quadratic equation, the things that I scratched out here, are really just transformations. That just means that there are ways to change the parabola's shape, size, or position. What we are looking at now is a regular mirror leaning against the wall, and we're viewing it through a piece of one-way glass that I'm adjusting back and forth. There's a strand of cool white LEDs on the foreground in between the two pieces of glass, and I'm using a green laser pointer to generate this weird sort of geometry. And right about here you can really start to see our parabola clearly emerge. Now obviously there are easier ways. You can just squirt the garden hose up into the air to see the shape of a parabola. But that's not really the point. The point is that mathematics describes the structure of our world, whether we notice it or not. Hope you found this interesting.